Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Josephine and on this channel we talk about fragrances. Today's video is all about Aqua Di Gio fragrances for men. I have been requested to do videos about flankers and original fragrances, so I thought that there isn't a perfect video for this time of year than to talk about Aqua Di Gio. So Aqua Di Gio, the original fragrance, is such an iconic perfume created back in the 90s and since then there's been quite a few flankers that have come out. So I have three of the flankers today, the ones that are still on the market that haven't been discontinued and I will be reviewing the original Aqua Di Gio and its flankers to tell you which one I think is the best to get. Okay, so we are still in summer, it is still very, very hot, and what better fragrance to wear when it is super hot outside than Aqua Di Gio. So Aqua Di Gio, as I said earlier, is an iconic, freshy perfume for men. It was a re revolutionary scent back in the 90s and is still a great perfume today. So let's begin with the original Aqua Di Gio, the original Eau de Toilette that launched back in the 90s. So I'm gonna spray it on my skin to remind me a little bit. Right, this is such a nice scent. So Aqua Di Gio is all about a fresh, citrusy, mineral and aquatic fragrance. It is reminiscent of the seaside, so it's not the beach, it's really the sea, this mineral salty feel that you get from like a sea breeze. This perfume to me is the Mediterranean summer in a bottle. This is what it smells like. It's gorgeous, it's citrusy, it's fresh, and it leaves a really lovely, musky, a little bit floral scent on your skin as it develops. It is a beautiful scent. To me, this fragrance is really your classic, freshy DNA, very easy to wear, super, super casual as well, and a fragrance that a lot of people can like. This is a really mass appealing perfume. It is beautiful. I think this perfume is actually quite unisex. As a woman, I would totally wear it. It doesn't have a very distinct, very, very strong masculine feel to it. It definitely has more of a unisex vibe. So as I said, this fragrance is super casual. It has that shower fresh quality to it. It's a very safe perfume as well. So if you're looking for a nice summer fresh fragrance to blind by, for example, you can't really go wrong with the original Aqua Di Gio. It's very pleasing. In terms of versatility, this is a really great fragrance, a great summer fragrance that you can wear throughout the day and transition into the night as well. You can also wear this perfume to the office, so it's really versatile. This is a perfume that is, I think, appropriate for all ages. So if you're a teenager to someone in your 50s, you can totally rock this fragrance. It's appropriate for everyone. The drawback of this perfume is really its performance. So when I tested it on my skin after two hours, it was still there, but it was more closer to your skin. So it wasn't projecting like crazy. Then after four hours, it was completely gone. And now moving on to Aqua Di Gio Profumo. So this is a iconic flanker that a lot of people love and I totally understand why. This is a more dark and intense version of the original Aqua Di Gio. And to me, it is more smoky and has a bit of a resinous feel as well on my skin. So this perfume retains the Aqua Di Gio DNA, this minerality and salty feel from the original fragrance, but it's enhanced with patchouli and incense which makes it more woodsy and smoky. And on my skin, it feels a little bit resinous, like pine-like resinous, which I don't really know where this comes from, but it's fresh, a bit salty, so perhaps it's the mix between patchouli and the salty notes. This perfume is more complex, it's more dense, and it feels a little bit more refined than the original Aqua Di Gio. This perfume is also, I find, more mature. I would say it's appropriate for people, for men, in their late 20s and onwards. I wouldn't say this is a teenager type of perfume. It's definitely more of a mature vibe. This is truly a masculine perfume. It's refined and it's a gentleman scent. That's what I would say about this fragrance. This is a freshy gentleman's perfume. In terms of performance, absolutely, absolutely fantastic. This fragrance lasts on my skin a solid eight hours, which is really, really great for a freshy type of perfume. 
So I think performance is great. You also have a really lovely sillage, so that scent cloud around you is very nice. And Aqua di Gio Profumo is like your wingman. This perfume is loved by women. It is a huge, huge compliment getter from women if this is something that is important to you. I can tell you right now that me personally, as a woman, I enjoy this scent on a man, but also I have a few friends and family who love this scent on a man too. The next flanker is Aqua di Gio Absolute. Compared to the other two fragrances, it is totally, totally different in terms of keeping this salty, marine-like feel of the Aqua di Gio DNA. Completely different olfactive territory. So to me, this fragrance is also a little less versatile compared to the other two because it is like your perfect clubbing, going out scent. It, to me, smells more like a Pacaraban hybrid between One Million by Pacaraban and Invictus. So it has still sort of a freshness that is with the likes of Invictus, but it has that addictive, thick, fruity, woodsy type of DNA that you can find in One Million by Pac Rabanne. So for me, this is immediately what I thought of when I first sprayed this fragrance. And so it kind of goes away from that original Aqua di Gio DNA. This perfume to me isn't my favorite out of the range, I have to say. It reminds me a little bit of the high street brands, so these high street clothing brands that pump out fragrance outside of their stores to attract people into their stores. This is what I get from this perfume, is that kind of vibe. If you really like this sort of uh, sexy, mass appealing, addictive, fruity, woody type of DNA, I'm sure you will like this perfume. In terms of performance, it isn't the best. It is the second worst performing fragrance in the range after the original Aqua di Gio pour Homme. So yeah, to me, not massively impressed by this fragrance. Uh, it lasts on my skin between four to six hours. Six is really a stretch, so more like four to five hours on my skin. It's not the most versatile fragrance out of the range either. It has a very specific purpose, in my opinion. It is really more for a going out, clubbing type of situation. In terms of age, I find that it's more for a younger man just because it has that one million feel which I associate with a younger man. <laughs> So that is my take on the Aqua di Gio Absolute. And finally, we have the latest release from Armani. It is Aqua di Gio Profundo, not to be confused with Profumo. Profundo is the latest release from the brand. It came out earlier in 2020, so this year. And this perfume is more on the lines of the original Aqua di Gio. So it's the closest one in terms of DNA, in terms of that citrusy marine feel, but it's made more modern. And I'm gonna say this right now, the first time I sprayed this perfume, I was not impressed. To me, this fragrance is just boring. It's something that I have smelt over and over again. It's not a unique DNA. And the first perfume that came to my mind when I spray this perfume is Dior Sauvage. To me, Aqua di Gio Profundo is a Dior Sauvage wannabe. That's what it is. And the reason why I'm saying this is because it has a very, very high dose of ambroxan that is mixed with some sort of aromatic feel, aromatic herbs, which I find again in Sauvage. If you already own Sauvage, you probably don't need this perfume uh, because I find that in that realm, Sauvage is probably better. With Aqua di Gio Profundo, it retains the citrusy marine feel and the ambroxan is really an ambroxan bomb. It's just very, very strong and abrasive. But, but, as it continues to develop in your skin, as you wear it throughout the day, and this is what happened when I was testing it on my skin, it becomes very pleasing. The sillage of this perfume is really nice and it has that addictive quality that Ambroxan reveals over time. This is a type of fragrance that I think will get you a lot of compliments. It's the type of DNA that's in the realm of, as I said, Dior Sauvage, but also Creed Aventus. It has that likable factor to it. I would say compared to all the other perfumes within the Aqua di Gio range, this fragrance is probably one of the ones that you will get the most compliments out of, just because of that Ambroxan feel, that Dior Sauvage type of DNA. Versatility-wise, this perfume is extremely versatile, like all of the other fragrances except for the Absolute. Very versatile, you can 
wear it, I would say even throughout the year. This is probably one of the most versatile fragrances because it does have that summery, fresh feeling, but at the same time, it can be worn in winter, for example, in an office environment or more on a casual day if you want to just smell good and clean. I think this perfume could also work during all four seasons basically. So if you're looking for a signature type of perfume, so a fragrance that you can wear all throughout the year in many different situations, Profundo is probably the one that is most versatile. And also this fragrance is again appropriate for all ages, similar to the original Aqua Di Gio, you can be a teen, you can be someone that is older, this perfume will work just fine. And in terms of performance, this fragrance is one of the best performing out of the range, right up there with Aqua Di Gio Profumo, it will last so solid, very solid, eight hours on your skin, if not more. So performance wise, it's very, very good. But now, what you've been all waiting for, what is the verdict? Which Aqua Di Gio fragrance would I recommend to you? I would recommend the Aqua Di Gio Profumo. And the reason why I'm recommending this fragrance to you is because out of all the fragrances within the Aqua Di Gio range, it is the one that is the most intriguing, most mysterious, most complex and layered, that has the most unique type of DNA. It is also a perfume that has fantastic performance, so it will last on your skin a very long time, has a great sillage. It is also a huge, huge, huge compliment getter. Women love this fragrance and it's also extremely versatile. So there you have it. Go for Aqua Di Gio Profumo, not any of the other fragrances within the Aqua Di Gio range. So that was my take on Aqua Di Gio and all the flankers. I hope you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments down below which fragrance out of the range that you prefer to wear. I would love to know. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in another video. Bye!